thank you for joining the discussion today we have for uh, containerization of the open OLT adapter. We're looking to get a decision on how to proceed over the next few weeks on uh, whether to proceed with Python and then follow with Go or do a migration to Go from the start. I think that's the main topic for today. And uh, with that, just remember we do post this to YouTube afterwards, so keep that in mind with comments that you make during the discussion. That I think we'll get started. So I don't know if there's anyone specifically who you want me to hand it over to. Um, I think there was some exchange on the meetings last week and then also over uh, Bolt to discuss. So I'll open it up for, for comments. Maybe, maybe I can kind of just summarize my understanding of, of, of where this stands right now. Um, so, so basically, uh, Redis had created some um, new Jira stories around um, basically converting the Open OLT to Go, and uh, as part of that, uh, I guess containerization was, was part of that whole uh, whole uh, development task. Um, so I, I guess, it, and it turns out, I guess, I guess there's, there's all, already an ongoing. Um, uh, program that was basically containerizing um, the existing um, Python-based OLT, open OLT adapter. Uh, Dinesh and Aaron were working on that, uh, as far as I understand. Um, and uh, so I, I guess that has gone a certain a certain way. Uh, and and I guess the the discussion last time was around, well, do we just abandon the uh, Python-based uh, Open OLT adapter and essentially focus on the Go-based Open OLT adapter. Um, and there was some thinking in that previous discussion around, well, you know, maybe we should just go right to the Go-based Open OLT adapter. Um, and after, you know, I'm, personally, after giving that a little bit of thought, I, I, it seems like it might be worthwhile to. And, and just and based on, on feedback from Dinesh and, and Ken from Siena, that you know, uh, containerization seems like it's a fairly large um, effort, and uh, so I, I, I think it, it might have some value to actually continue on with the uh, Python-based containerization effort. I mean, it's gone it's gone a certain ways along already, and it, it's probably going to be available for testing um, with the uh, Go based for the core before you know complete Go uh, based open OLT adapter will be. So I think it would have some value as far as integration and testing of the message based interfaces, the you know, access to the database, etc. From a containerized version of the Python based adapter. So um, so I'm just to throw that open to the for the discussion, uh, you know, what other people think, uh, so feel free. Yeah, so right now, the open OLT adapter containerization Python work is at the beginning, means we have created the container, uh, open OLT container and it registers with core uh, and uh, we can bring up the open OLT container, but other than that, not much has been added yet. So I, that's what, where it is right now. And I personally think that if we continue with Python based code, it will be a throwaway code. We won't need later on when we move to the Go. So I, I don't see much point doing uh, open OLT code in Python. And another thing is ONU adapter, we haven't yet started so that that may not be ready by march so it will be just open OLT adapter if you continue to work on python yeah i think we we had some little few discussions or comments around the the onu based um python adapter i mean I, i'm not sure the ultimately is going to be much of value in terms of performance in the near term anyway of doing a conversion for the ONU adapt because that that's going to be essentially blocked by um, its communication mechanism, which goes through the um, OLT adapter to the ONUs. So, you know, spe it, speeding up the o the ONUs is 
probably going to cause a bottleneck for the for the OLT anyway. But um, so I, I think I think the the performance any performance increases on the ONU adapter, you know, probably worthwhile to to wait a little bit for that just to make sure the OLT adapter is is uh, Performing well with all these, you know, ONUs that need to communicate through it to the ON, uh, the physical ONUs itself. Um, so I, I'm not sure that that would be a, you know, much of a uh, an issue uh, in the near term versus the, you know, speeding up the OLT adapter itself. Um, and also, I, you know, I, I think there is some value in the near term because we're going to have to wait for. A, a go based open OLT adapter anyway so we may as well do some take advantage of this this uh, python based containerized adapter to do some integration with the core moving to ONU is, is not going to be a thing there's quite a bit of library work that will have to go with it as well and I know from the last time we talked it seemed like that wasn't even going to start until after March anyway so I say we leave the O and U well enough alone for now. But yeah, Matt, uh, hi, this is Amit. Oh. Uh, Amit, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. sorry. Yeah. So um, uh, one point I wanted to bring out was uh, uh, now with the Volta 2.0 release being pushed out to end of March, right? So the open OLT adapter available in a containerized form is a mandatory uh, requirement for the Volta 2.0 release, right? And uh, as Ken also pointed out in the last call that uh, converting the Python uh, adapter to Golang is quite a substantial amount of work. Uh, although we are planning to invest quite a lot of resources, substantial amount of resources, but to de-risk the Volta 2.0, it might be prudent to continue the work on Python uh, containerization just in case uh, if you sleep. I agree. I think for the March timeframe, moving the Python adapters to to go is might be a big ask, but containerizing them is probably doable. Yeah, so I think that that would de risk 2.0. Yeah, uh, actually, I would like to concur with Amit. So, uh, the thing is, uh, as Dinesh was saying, that the Python code will eventually be a throwaway code. But one point of view would also be like the open OLT code, which is already in Python, is actually has gone through some testing cycles. I mean, that I'm assuming. And if we could, if we uh, move it to the go, then we need to start afresh all the code with uh, python code which has gone through testing or any bug fixes which are already there in open olt code right now they will be lost and uh, i think that exercise we need to do a fresh in go so it may make sense to continue with python uh, and maybe in parallel if we can go uh, uh, in in parallel we can start working on go as well yeah i think the phrase throwaway code is a little unfair i think <laughs> If you measure time long enough, all code is throwaway code. So it's really just your point of view. Um, Prudence it says, you know, March and keeping the Python adapters is, especially with testing, like was just mentioned, is probably um, achievable. And um, I think, Len, um, you, you're saying the CIG also thinking about uh, working on the Container, uh, containerization of the the open OT adapter, right? And then you have some resources available. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. Yes, John. Yeah, CIG is uh, considering uh, seriously uh, migrating to Go because uh, I, I think uh, um, uh, in the rec in recent uh, conference, uh, a lot of uh, uh, customers of uh, more focus on the performance in the future. So. Maybe uh, in long term, it's uh, uh, the target is to migrate to Go, uh, and uh, I think CIG can uh, contribute some resources on on the on this on this. Uh, you, but uh, so let, let me ask. So was CIG uh, engaged in the in the containerization of the Python or? 
or you want to get started with a Go, Go containerization um, at, at, in parallel? Uh, I think in parallel is better. Okay. Um, so right now, Amit um, and Arun and Dinesh, right? So uh, what I and then you know what I'm saying is, do we do we need additional resources to containerize the Python based, um, or do we believe the resource we have right now for Python based containerization? Uh, is sufficient, and then we can allocate uh, additional resources to look into the Go adaptation and the ONU containerization. I I personally feel that for Python Open OLT containerization, we would need more resources. I'm not sure if we can finish it by March. But at at, at, at this at this time, we you know I think. We have Arun, we have Dinesh, we have Ahmed, this Redis, right? So, um, so okay. Let me let me double check. Let me confirm this again. Ahmed, the 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 story you open is Go based, but but you concur um, to have uh, uh, to de-risk the two thousand zero release which uh, we should focus on the python so is does it mean your resource will will, will, will become will, will focus on the python containerization first uh no sean so what what i meant was basically the work that we are doing we should continue with the resources that are already working on that so the guys uh, the team that would be working out here would focus solely on uh Moving it to Golang. Okay, so so your focus is the the Redis resources only on Golang based. Um, and Arun and Danish, you only have two people. Um, uh, so if, without resource, I think none of these can realized. <clears throat> So who's working on the Python open OLT adapter containerization now? Because there's work that's going on now. Is that who's who's doing that work? Uh, that would be uh, Dinesh for now. Uh, and uh, I I have contributed some part, but uh, Actually, in this January time frame, due to some business uh, priorities, I was not able to contribute uh, for the almost for the whole month. So, uh, so, so there was yeah. So for so now, the Nash was the only person who was working on it. So it sounds like to me that if the folks who are going to work on the adapter are only going to work on it if it's in Go, then it sounds like Python containerization, unless somebody else steps up it's not going to happen unless we have somebody else work on it. Is that correct? I, 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 I think so. Um, Arun, um, yeah. one question for you is, is I know HCL is very interested in this area. Uh, once, you, once you free up in January, um, uh -huh. will you be able to uh, Get back into the you know this workflow for, uh, you know this task, and also um, how how are you doing on the Go language? Uh, uh, for Go language for me Go will be a new language, but um, I mean, see the thing is I think language is not a big barrier right now. Uh, I, mean, I can I think I can easily catch up on the language part, but uh, the other thing about the availability, Sean, I think for that, I need to check with uh, Bipin. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. You may, yeah, so you know about that. So yes. once that thing is finalized, I think I'll be able to uh, devote 100% of my time on this. Okay, but so so that's which language you you, you don't really care, uh, should, is, is not a major factor. 
I mean, for I, Python, I'm for Python, I'm very comfortable, and for Go, I think I can start working once I go th- go f- through the fundamentals of the language. Okay. Yeah. Um. So, I mean, just just to put a little bit perspective on this, so the way me and Dinesh are working was actually we started out uh, from file to file, but later on. Uh, when we saw the whole thing, we we actually thought of uh, continuing our work from uh, feature to feature wise. So like like first we started with the registration, then we did pre-provisioning and enabling the device, and after that adding the flows and then actually making the flows work. So with that kind of uh, uh, categorization of work, I think we can pick one uh, one on. Uh, one one uh, one part each and complete that and i think similarly we can uh, move on the go language as well huh. uh actually go is not very difficult to uh, catch up it's very much like c but it has a lot of additional features Uh, um, may, may I ask, like, uh, who's doing the design in Go of Open OLT? Yeah, so uh, we would be doing the design. Um, we're not yet done through that, but uh, we plan to uh, create the design and uh, also submit it to the community to uh, get any feedback. Okay, that, that's a good idea because it's uh, usually language it should never matter. Uh, but in, in this case, like uh, Python is an object-oriented language, Go is not. Uh, you can mimic object-oriented yeah. Go, um, but uh, there's a lot of features. There's a lot of different way of thinking when you talk when you go into Go. And on top of that, uh, all the time that we have been building adapters or even the core, we've twisted Python. We never had to worry about uh, concurrency. Uh, because it's a single event yeah. loop and that's it. In Go, you have to worry about it all the time. So it's uh, the design is extremely important in Go. So it's, it's I, I suggest to have a design first in mind how it's going to look like before actually going and write the code. Yeah, sure, uh, sure. Can we, we we plan to do that? Uh, do you have any specific uh, tools that you recommend for uh, like uh, proposing the design in? Like uh, because because it's not object oriented, right? So Yerbel is not the best tool. Well, it, it doesn't have to. I don't have any specific tools uh, per se, but uh, any way, any. You don't have to use UML or anything. It just need to, you need to show how, how you're going to design the features. Like it's, sure. it's okay. you don't have to like you know just just plain drawings. It, it doesn't have to be a formal tools, but at, at least it needs to give an idea of like how the different components are communicating. How yeah, the, the module level. Yeah. Yeah, the module level and the concurrency uh, design should be uh, clear. Yeah. Yeah, sure. And and in terms of IDE per se, like uh, we use uh, the GoLand IDE, and it's uh, pretty good. It's made by this uh, by uh, this JetBrains, and it's pretty good. It's, uh, it's similar as Python. Yeah, I think we're using the, yeah, we're using the VC code. Uh, I think the one. Oh, okay. Um, Julia, I think we have a base on the resource. Go is the way to go, right? Oh. Yeah, and, and is all is all testing with the core going to be stopped until you know until Go the Go version is available or? Um... No, I think there is a Ponsim working with. Uh, core. The, what, uh, so, Sean, can you say that again? I, I, the testing, I think, probably right now only on the constant side, right? 
Right, but but the uh, you know testing of the message interface between the the V core and the the Open OLT adapter, um, you know that could continue um, if we have a Python version. It, it's, it, it's just that there's, there's going to be potentially going to be a gap between. No, you know, but the, the, those interfaces will be same as Ponsim. It won't be different, and we already have Ponsim. Right, right, but it's a simulated environment, right, as, as opposed to having a, a real OLT that you're testing with, and data path, et cetera. That, that, that is my concern. Um, yeah, but I, I I don't have hardware setup, so I was anyway planning to use BBSIM to test the open OLT adapter. <laughs> yeah, same uh, with me also. Uh, Arum has the same issue, yeah, OK. But you know, it, <laughs> uh, Dinesh, you're from Edge Core. What do you mean you don't have a hardware? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so, oh, go ahead, Sean. Go ahead, Julie. I was going to say what what I've gathered from the recommendations are: if resources were not an issue, the preference would be to complete the containerization of the Python-based uh, adapter. Uh, for, for a number of resources, and then also work in parallel on the Go-based adapter. But there's doubt on uh, on whether this could be completed by March, so I have that captured at higher risk. So I think if resources were not an issue, it sounded like that was viewed as the most agreeable path and lowest risk, but we are strapped with resource constraints, at least of this during this call. So what I can do is we want to bring the resource issue up with the larger group in, you know, 10 minutes or so, we could do that. I suspect most of the interest parties are already on this call, so I don't know if there would be a lot of value out there or not. Um, it would perhaps have some more feedback from operators, because I do know that uh, DT had mentioned a strong preference for the Go-based adapter on the previous call, so I had that in the minutes from last time. But I think I think the resource issue is is the a big factor we have here, um, and then also if if we end up going with working on only the Go based adapter, based on not having enough resource to to continue the Python based work for the containerization, then we have a risk identified that we may miss the schedule. Does that sound like the, is that in line with what the other folks took away from this? Yeah, I think so. Okay. So do we, I and I, I, I don't, th I'm not terribly optimistic about getting more resources, more resources identified during our regular call that starts in a few minutes. Um, we can bring that up though, if, if, if that would be useful. So I think what I'd like to come away from here is a recommendation due to resource constraints on what our path forward is. So I think that weighing of the risk for 2.0 is a very real one. So Sean, as product owner, probably needs some feedback from you for that. Perhaps the other service operators as well will have views on that. Um, but again, this is also a um, contribution-based group. And so if the majority of the resources we have that are committing to do work are committing to do it on the go-based, then I think that sort of dictates the path in any case. Uh, Lynn, I also wanted to check. Did I, did I capture correctly that you had resources that would be able to work on the go-based adapter containerization? Uh, yes, yes, so? correct. Okay. Yes. I'll get rid of the question mark there. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, a quick question I have, like when we say complete by March uh, uh, 2.0, what exactly do we mean by complete? Is it uh, something that is uh, uh, people who start to take it and uh, uh, and test it in their own environment, or is it like feature complete? Is it uh, uh, good enough to for to try out? Is it's comparable to what the Python adapters can do today. So passing traffic, e-authentication, 
of VLAN traffic, you know, tech profiles when they're done as well. To me, that's when it's one to one, then there's no reason not to move. Whereas if there's something missing, then it's going to be continuing to kind of fill in the blanks. Okay, so based on what I've seen, uh, migrating from uh, Python to Go, uh, pretty much there's two months left uh, to achieve that. Uh, it's, I think it's not just a higher risk. I don't think it's uh, to have uh, comparable functionality. I, I, I don't think it's feasible. So, you know, Go feature com parity is not possible by March with the OLP adapter. That's, that's my, been my understanding. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I think potentially we can do a feature by feature, feature add, right? But we need to have a framework available to add in additional features. So in that case, um, what we'll, we'll, we'll March time frame has the fundamental, and we can pass traffic. Um, and 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 additional stuff we we use the rest of the three months to add additional including igmp would that be something feasible ken i think that part could be feasible like for example like adding device enable device and getting some flows in and uh, just to get some traffic by i think it's uh, it's it's feasible uh but but, but given that uh you have to have technology profile in place. You have to have uh, uh, the whole open OLT. You need to rethink in, in the design. Like it depends how quickly a design can be can can be made and uh, and approved uh, uh, before the development can start. So I, I think it's it's feasible. It's it's, it's all depends of how many uh, folks uh, are there, but it, it has to be continuous. Uh, Development and continuous integration to, to at least have something uh, by end of March. Right. Um, Amit, um, regarding to the design, what stage are you in right now? Yeah, so uh, we are working on it, but uh, I don't have a timeline by when uh, I, uh, we would be able to submit it. Uh, I hope I can uh, give some updates uh, next week. Okay, um, do you do do you think uh, do do you think Shad would need to be involved on doing your design time frame? Yeah, so uh, we will definitely get a tribute by uh, Shad can and definitely everyone right. Right. To that. And 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 among you know uh, among these you know two different options, we I don't see Shad's in uh, your own F engagement on this one. Um, I think we need to push back to ONF, see, you know, whatever community decide, you know, we, we, we need, we need, res we need res resource and guidance from the ONF site also. Yeah, this is Scott here. I can, uh, I can raise this point to uh, Sarov when we have our uh, stand up today that we'd like some uh, guidance on the issue. Right. You know, for example, if if, the, if go forward with the Python, with Danish and uh, and, and Shad and the Arun, if that's enough, then, then we can do that in parallel, right? And then we will leave the GoLan um, with the Redis and the and the CIG, and I'm hoping potentially AT and T Foundry. Um, in that case, I think that parallel path may may be doable. But it, it depends on where Shad's resource can be plugged in. And then also, I think we'd want, you know, if if we can have commitment for Shad and for Arun and Dinesh, we've got three developers, if we could get an estimate of what the time frame would be to complete that. Because we said it's not a, not achievable with the current resources we have so what resources are needed to complete by march or what would be the targeted completion date based on having maybe three resources i think we need to answer that a bit also to weigh this in yeah okay julie eight o'clock okay. all right 
Okay, thanks everyone. I'm just going to continue the recording. I'll make a brief little switch over here to our Volta call and welcome the rest of our folks. And we'll start with our usual meeting. Thanks everyone for joining. I appreciate the feedback. And welcome everyone who joined after the start of the, the OLT adapter discussion. This is our regularly scheduled Tuesday Volta call for January 22nd, 2019. Uh, we do post the meetings to YouTube. Keep that in mind during discussions and any presentations that we have today. And with that, I would like to go over our agenda for today. So we do have the introduction of a new member to the community. We wanted to have some time for the discussion. Eric, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll go over new JIRA issues. We have the, I sent out the link to the updated release planning slides, so updated them after last week's meeting with the feedback from that discussion. And then uh, if we have time, then go over some updates for what's in progress and plan for Sprint 13. I suspect we may run out of time today. We'll see how that goes. But just letting you know that this is a three week sprint again, and it's targeted to complete on February 8th. And with that, also, I, oh, one more item I wanted to mention is uh, for folks who are not able to join the OLT adapter discussion, then I wanted to do a recap of what we did uh, cover during that meeting. It's in the, I captured it in some notes here from the group, and I'll include that in the minutes when we send it out later today as well. So with that, let me switch over. Uh, is there someone from Datacom who would like to have me give them presentation rights for the brief intro we have planned today for you? Hello, this is Heather Costa. Are you guys listening? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, Julie, thank you. Uh, I'm going to make a brief introduction and then I don't know if uh, Ricardo Pianta and Donaldo is uh, on the call so I can uh, present them. I'm here. I think so. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Donaldo is our project uh, program manager from GPON, uh, and Ricardo Pianta is the, uh, the, the, the head of the R&D team located in uh, the headquarter in El Dorado do Sul. Um, we have a, we have um, also a team working here in Curitiba, and Franco is the the the, the product owner, and he is also in the call. And Luis Nogozek, a, a member from the team that is performing some evaluation on GPON and studying Volta, so he can will be able to to discuss a little of his uh, concerns and and discoveries this week. Okay, starting. I'm going to share the, the screen here, just a, a minute. So Julie, you are on mute. Okay. Uh, are you, can you, can you see it? Presenter. Not yet, I need to make you presenter. Okay, I'm trying to. Presentation right now. Now I'm sharing. Yes, yes you are. Yeah, okay. Is it full screen? That's, yes. Okay. yes okay, so Datacom is a telecommunication equipment industry. Uh, we are mostly operating in the South America market, uh, but we are planning expansions to the international market. We are starting to grow in this uh, direction also this year. Um, we have currently 500 employees. Uh, most of them are working in R&D, as you can see here, 30% of our uh, whole basis of employees is working with research and development. 45% is industrial and 25% administration and operation. So this is uh, an important remark about our um, R&D force here. It's quite expressive for the, the industry. This is a, a basis of some of our customers, uh, some of them operating just in the Brazilian market, uh, mostly carrier companies and ISPs, small or, or large ISPs we, we, we work. 
you can interrupt me at any time for any questions. Just feel free, please. Okay. Um, we have products in the Ethernet suites. Uh, this is our our major uh, line product, but we have also GPON that is becoming uh, it's increasing very fast. And currently, we have um, we have expanded to ISPs. So we have a, a lot of market going on in Brazil and, and becoming bigger. We have also products in TDM. Um, most of them are legacy products. We are not currently developing any anymore issues on the on that. So today I'm focusing mostly in the GPO. So I'm passing now to Donaldo if he wants to uh, make a presentation of our product line here. So uh, nice to meet you guys. Uh, here's Donaldo from Datacon speaking. Uh, so in this slide, you can see the, 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 our main lines of Jipon solutions. We have three uh, OLTs uh, from four parts to 16 parts. Uh, with, uh, um, all of them using 10 gig uh, uplink interface. Uh, all of this uh, equipment that we're showing to you uh, is 100% developed by Datacom. All the hardware is, is Broadcom based, uh, all the hardware developed by Datacom using Broadcom chipsets, and the software is 100% developed by Datacom. Uh, the operational system is Datacom uh, operational system called DMOS. Also, uh, together with our GPON uh, solution, we have uh, some models of ONUs, ONUs, ONTs. Um, one of them only bridge, other other router, and other solution with router plus uh, Wi-Fi and also VoIP interfaces. Uh, the next slide, please, Adder. Uh, as Heather told before, um, the, our main um, main line of solution is uh, focus on telecommunication market here in Brazil and abroad, and this is our new line of uh, Metro Ethernet uh, switches from in the. I'm sorry. I'm uh, sorry. No problem. The le in the left side, bottom left, uh, you can see our Ethernet demarcation device. It's a 10 gig uh, Ethernet demarcation device, EDD. And going on into, through the ladder, you can see other uh, Metro Ethernet suites from using giga interfaces and also 100 gig uh, interfaces has the DM4270. And also our chassis based solution with uh, four and eight line cards uh, also based on the MOS. Um, this is a, a, a quick overview of our solution, Gipon and Suites. And to manage all of them, uh, we, we have also an internally developed solution um, with totally functional NMS uh, uh, functionalities called the MView. Uh, it's in web interfaces and also J J Java interfaces, uh, and constantly going on to to provide new features to our markets. Um, this is all. Only a brief introduction. Um, thank you for the time. I don't know, if others, if you would like to talk about the the. So so the uh, this is a quick question. Just a quick question. So, on, on your pawn interface, right? So, uh, I mean, on your pawn, so the uh, is that the the what, is that the Broadcom based or is a uh, other other chip based uh, the pawn uh, for the Mac pawn Mac? Our our our, our OLT solution is uh, uh, Broadcom based. If we have some more time, I don't know, Julie, how how long have we gone? Too far or, or no, but we have some slides here regarding our architecture. Maybe that can become this a little more clear for everybody. Oh, and that, that's that that is okay. I, I just want to know the high level stuff. If that Broadcom based and the integration to the open OT adapter should be pretty straightforward. So that's what that's the reason why I'm asking. So so it's okay, a Broadcom. Sure. 
So is the Broadcom Maple based? Yes. Okay, great, thanks. Uh, so, so okay. So continue. So, yeah, I, I think okay. We, let's keep the, let, let's keep the discussion very high level, but at the same time, you know, just you know, a good introduction to your company and your involvement for this and your interest to this project. That that'll be great. Okay, Sean. Thank you for your time. Yeah, I think I can I can complete, uh, Sean. Uh, our idea uh, on this engagement is to explore the possibilities of using um, Volta and eventually porting Volta to our OLTs, have uh, some of our uh, switches running, um, some of these artifacts. In, in fact, we are studying the architecture, uh, seeing where are the, the, the APIs, uh, what, how would fit in, in our architecture or, or not. We are, uh, in our own work, we are disaggregating our own OS and mm -hmm. spreading the pieces, so that's that's the idea for the future work. So, 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 so I, I saw your your OLT that you have the DMOS. So I, I think that's a that, that your data come operating system, right? So, uh, so, so, so basically, you're using your own operating system. Um, so. Uh, so when you say you they want to disaggregate your uh, the so I, I, okay let me say in this way so are are your switches you know you know I'm 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 looking at the the, the Siba architecture right so there can be a trellis top of rack switch and then you have the SDN controller and then you have the you know and then we have the OOT and then we have Volta in to to con manage and control the OOT and ONT. Um, so are you is your is your company and your, your your project is thinking about adapting your devices the no element into the siba architecture or potentially you're trying to define something a little bit different um it's in our preliminary work what we are doing so far is uh, it's along the same lines we are removing uh, part of our OS, so the, the control plane, and actually we, we are cutting it on the uh, uh, abstraction layer on, on the Broadcom controller, taking out of the box our OS. And with that in mind, we can eventually switch pieces, right? For example, replacing our control plane by ONOS or, or using, um, uh, a flow-based communication or gRPC communication with the hardware abstraction layer and replacing it for uh, Volta or, or other or Stratum or something like that. So that's that's the idea and, and that's how we are engaging also with Stratum. Uh, evaluating these uh, possibilities of replacing some of our uh, proprietary components by open source and, and vice versa uh, depending on and by disaggregating it, I mean uh, it doesn't matter where they are running or or which pieces are where, right? Right. That's cool. Um, so you're using the how of the uh, uh, is, uh, okay. This is how we abstraction layer, right? Um, are you using BAL or uh, uh, at this moment, or you 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 just using the Maple SDK? Uh, for in general, the abstraction layer uh, were built by ourselves, so we have okay. a, a number of abstraction layers. Uh, okay. But of course, when we go uh, down in, into the stack, we uh, finish on on the SDKs, on the Maple SDK, on the Broadcom SDK. But we don't use Ball. Okay. Okay. We've got maybe one more minute. If there are additional questions from anyone else. Uh, but uh, so, so Ricardo, do you have any expectation from this community, or do you think data come? As uh, you know, I think you joined a little bit late, but but the, we were talking about open OOT adapter, the map into the Volta 2.0 containerization framework, right? So, of course, I would, you know, <laughs> when I see you guys, I say, oh, maybe you can have some 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 uh, 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 software engineer. Also engage with the Volta project to move the project forward on the Volta 2.0 framework. So I don't know whether is there something the data com will be considering. Uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, our idea, Sean, is once we understand well the the, the architecture, uh, for sure we can contribute on both on engineering effort and also on uh, architectural inputs. Okay. We, 
as we have a, 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 a lot of in-house expertise on the inner pieces of the uh, OOT communication, uh, OMCI, uh, all, the, uh, all the flows that uh, are in this space, we believe we can we can make contributions and and also uh, uh, of course we want to use it uh, as well so um, that's that's the idea um, of course it's once the engagement gets mature and and we understand better what's going on. Great. So yeah, you know, great to meet you in the ONF Connect. I think that's how we met. Um, and then I I I I I am glad about your in engagement. So if there's anything. On architectural wise or framework wise, you, if you required some of the uh, introduction from the own, from the Volta project, let us know, and then we will we will we will help as much as we can. But at the same time, welcome to the the Volta community. Um, if it, it, it does data come has any additional things you want to uh, speak up before we, clo we close this segment. Yeah, uh, thank you, Chan. And just one note: we are um, we are starting also the engagement with Stratum. Okay. Uh, we 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 are becoming collaborators there as well, and and maybe one of the opportunities that we see to make the bridge between Stratum and Volta. And, and, and... <coughs> that 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 would be great. And I, I'm I'm sure ONF and then the community. I appreciate your involvement. Um, Anybody else from the community has any comment or question about the datacom? Great, welcome on board. Thanks, uh, Julie, back to you. Thanks. All right, I think what I'd like to do next is, uh, before we go into the new JIRA issues, give a quick recap of the discussion on the OpenLT adapter containerization. So uh, the outcome of that, I believe, is we are resource constrained in terms of, of following what the preferred approach would be. So the recommended approach, if we have sufficient resources, would be to complete the work on the containerization of the Python-based OpenOLT adapter. So that's in progress, but in order to meet the March timeline, it would need more committed resources. So the in the ideal world, again, we would have that running and then in parallel have a separate set of resources working on the migration to the Go-based adapter. So that work would go on in parallel. Uh, we don't have enough resources to do this, so we are looking for additional feedback from the community if needed uh, to come to a final agreed path forward. We do view the work on the Go-based, the migration to a Go-based adapter as high risk. Uh, so on the March timeframe, we don't believe it's feasible to deliver comparable functionality to what's there with the Python <coughs> open OLT adapter today. So that is another factor that needs to be considered during uh, decisions and discussions. Do we have, uh, for folks who were who are on the Volta call but were not on the open OLT containerization discussion, do you have questions for the team? Okay. I'm not hearing any, so we'll have some continued discussion there. I believe that Amit is going to uh, do some some work in the background on the proposed design for the Go-Base adapter and then provide some updates to the community on on a proposal there. Perhaps next week with my uh, earliest time frame for some some feedback there from Amit. Okay. So Julie, uh, yes. Julie, I, I, I missed out. What's the conclusion there? So we, we... We continue the Python uh, uh, cont containerized adapter and the uh, Go um, both at the same time. So that that is, if we have sufficient resources, that is the preferred path. But right now, we do not have sufficient resources, and the majority of the resources are available um, committing to work on the Go based. Uh, so we need to evaluate that and compare the risks. So we're kind of looking for some feedback from ONF for guidance as well. So we don't think we can deliver feature parity by March with what's available for the Python-based adapter. Uh, so that we need to look at it, what would be sufficient deliver by March or do we have more resources? And uh, the, the least risk to have something by March would be to work on the containerization of the Python base and finish that. <coughs> 
more resources as well in order to meet the target schedule. So we're resource constrained and need to decide, uh, you know, kind of the risk benefit comparison for the community on on how to proceed. And then if this if the decision is to go with primarily the go based adapter work and focus there, then how do we want to stage that out in terms of delivery since not everything can be done by March? Right. Sean or, or anyone, Sean Ying or anyone else, do you have additional comments to add? Uh, that's the reason why we add a shad name on the yeah. <laughs> item. Um, so, that's why I put you up here. Yes. Um, the other thing is the, the discussion we have is open OT focus. Um, the ONU adaptive containerization portion is still in, to be determined at this point. Um, you know, I, 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 at the meantime, you know, if the RADASIS and CIG, uh, if you, if I'm wondering if you guys are flexible, whether you can allocate a small portion of your resource on the Python site. That 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 is my question. Um, but uh, but uh, again, the direction depend depends on where the resource is. So so Shad and I think uh, we definitely require ONF uh, um, comment on this one. So my my personal um, I think opinion is that uh, we we focus all our efforts on on the on the Go adapter and uh, and and if. If that can be expedited uh, to get as much uh, functionality in before March, uh, I think that makes more sense than splitting the resources resource base into a go base adapter, which is going to be throw away anyway. So that's uh, that's my preference. Um, and... uh, uh, Shah, one question: Is there any update? Once the, I, I think we are requesting Netsia to continue to develop the the. Technology profile to complete in the 1.x branch, right? So, are there any additional adaptation on the on the OpenOT adapter on the 1.6 branch if the to to work with the technology profile? So, I guess we we, we were in agreement that we will uh, do a proof of concept of the technology profile um, and the speed profile on on the 1.x, um, and that'll. Um, <clears throat> Uh, and, and that will be used as just as proof of concept so, so that uh, when the go based adapter is ready we will port over that functionality into okay. the go adapter. but okay. yes the, the, the I, I thought we had agreement that we will finish that work on, on the 1.x right uh, that's right yeah yeah when the, uh, the, the, going the digital, to, sorry go ahead yeah you sort of is going to I mean kind of uh, coordinating that uh, small Cross, uh, you know, cross cross organization team uh, to get that done as quickly as possible. Okay, so uh, what... yeah, can, can we talk about that too? Because uh, right now um, I'm assuming that Gamzi and uh, Corey plus uh, Garish from Radisys are are continuing to work in the Python based development of uh, tech profiles. So you know, I created a couple of additional stories around that. Uh, are you saying there's additional resources from ONF that could work on this also? Uh, on the on the 1.x uh, part? Yeah. Well, Python based. Yeah. 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 So so I I I I, I thought I mean um, my understanding is that I I will be involved in that. Okay. Yeah. I, I nobody let me know. <laughs> so we we're making plans without you right now. So we let's, let's get together and uh, talk about that. No. So the <laughs> this is sort of. Uh, yeah, so both Shad and I will be involved uh, from ONF to um, to bring that uh, technology profile and speed profile stuff um, to completion in the 1.x. Um, just so to learn from it, we're you know we're still having technical discussions just settled last week. So my advice again would be to to do the Go-based implementation. And get it to the point where you're containerized and it's working up to the functionality that 1.6 had, right? Um, maybe not start with technology profiles over there. It's really up to you, but 
but my recommendation would be not to start with technology profiles from the get go in the golang uh, adapter um no, no the you know. it's the pl the plan is to complete that in python and then do a switch over to exactly so. right so these two things can happen in parallel right while we work on the 1.6 stuff uh, for technology profiles and speed profiles you can get the golang one to the point where it's containerized and has the functionality of 1.6 and then move over the the rest um, to do the python based uh, containerized adapter I, if i heard correctly from julie you don't seem to have enough resources to do that so uh, that's okay it doesn't have to be done I mean, who's arguing for the Python based containerized? I mean, um, I guess there is I think some merit there. Part of it is yeah. risk to schedule, right? Because the, the Go based work is considered to be high risk uh, for delivering parity with what's available today on the Python based adapter in the March timeframe. So the risk is that this work may not be complete by March. Not, fees, not considered feasible to deliver that parity based by March. And so if that's acceptable to folks, then you know, trying to estimate when that work could be completed. Okay, so well. the March deadline is for what? Uh, for for, that's, for, two, for, that's our target for 2.0 at this point. Okay, but the March deadline is for whose uh, need? It's for the integration test, right? So, so you, you, it, it, it's uh, that we need to have a containerized adapter to continue the integration test of the whole Volta framework. So, so uh, it's it's it doesn't have to be full blown features, but at the same time, we need to have some basic stuff that people can start taking into the lab. Um, I, I I do believe, uh, even though you have Pansim. Uh, will, will fulfill some of the role, but I do believe that with the with the for the labs with the with the actual devices, we need to be able to start taking the Volta core into the lab. Um, I, and I so have a, so basic containerization with let's say EAPOL and DHCP working, you don't believe that it can be done by March. Right now, still de to be determined. It depends on how many resources, and then the, the and I think the framework design need to be on the open OT side. Uh, that's what Amit is, go Amit is going to put together, and uh, so I, I I guess it's it's just a statement based on the you know experience, but at the same time, you know, uh, it's not achievable. But it 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 really really need to be very very. Um, Discipline in order to deliver that, and um, and of course, I, I I will hate myself saying that, right? So we we scheduled the three sprint to deliver to deliver to that zero uh, with a working. When I say working, um, doesn't really need you know the goal is have the comparable one that's sick, but you know if not, uh, you know we just have to be able to explain that. What I'm saying is, you know, I can move the the 2.0 for one more sprint and then shorten the what 2.1 portion. That 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 is also possible, right? So, but hey, Julie probably will hate me saying that, but uh, but but I think the 2.0 time is just a milestone. We need to make sure we we meet. And if you take a look of that, we also have multiple TCON support. We also have inbound management need to be in 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 place for that too. So so. It's 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 a um... yeah. So this that seems to be too much for two dot oh. Actually, yeah. This, given that's my gut feeling, right? Given we have like five people saying they can work on stuff, yeah. you know, the math doesn't add up. Yeah. Either either pick a set of features or pick a date, Sean. You can't have both. <laughs> my gut feeling is yeah. My gut feeling yeah. is two dot oh. Uh, from what you just told me, end of March, getting it into the lab, be operational, right? Um, why do you need in-band management over there? Why do you need, uh, let's see, what else did you have in there? Um, uh, sorry, can you go back to the... the... Black groups, yeah. 
But this none of that shows up combined, until we get yeah. valve free. Valve free has to be done. Yeah, right. I mean, you can. Yeah, valve free so, itself is going to take time, right? And that's yeah. not even being scheduled for. Yeah. So the, the, there's the like library three or four features released to us to work on it. Correct. So, there's at least so three or four that, things in that 2.0 timeline which are, yeah, multiple TCON support, uh, right. in band they're, they're in red because we have profiles, no commitment. Yeah. We don't have a path forward for them right now. We don't have a commitment. So they were on the on the discussion last week, but we did not have a path forward for them. We did not have resources. So I, I agree those are, and you know, unless something changes significantly, there's no way to deliver those in this time frame. And then we had the open discussion on how we were going to proceed with the adapter. It looks like likely we're going to be doing the migration to go for that. And so we'll update these slides as well. So the discussion from last week's meeting was really the main focus for these uh, sprint 13, 14, and 15 is delivery on these items here. So the containerization of the OpenOLT adapter, I believe that's going to be the Go-based one. So we'll update this wording here. And then the containerization of the ONU adapter and then the completion and, uh, and porting over to, to uh, 2.0 of the tech profile and meter band work. So that's the main focus. The others were if there are resources, then we'd like that delivered. There were also these items that as long as there's not uh, resource overlap could pursue in parallel. And that was scalability testing for the with the simulated OLT. And then perhaps some expansion of the work for the automation test bed and then continued work on BB Sim. So these I don't think we have resource conflicts necessarily, but on this page, really it's these these three items were the must-haves. That's why they're in the bold, uh, bold blue. And then these, I don't see a path forward in this in by March. Okay, so in the bold blue, you still don't believe that the Go adapter can reach parity by end of March? That was the discussion that we had just before the bold call today. And and then you know. Again, right? So, so you guys are as experts. So, you know, if you can tell me, you know, it, we can meet that, and then I'll stick with this timeline. Well, we can certainly try. A try is try good enough. Well, right. This is an open source community, right? That's how open source projects work. Right. This is not a vend not one vendor that you're pushing to deliver by a certain date. Right. No, the I, open source community I, decides on a roadmap. We settle on a roadmap. We settle on uh, sprints. We try and work towards it. Right. So but there's no I, one throat to choke if if you can't. You know what I'm trying to get at, right? I mean. Yeah, Sarav, I think we're in agreement there. No one is, has um, commercial agreements with anyone that by date X, it has to give you YZ, right? It's, it's not a commercial agreement in an open source project. Right, Sarav, I think we're all in agreement there. Uh, John, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we're all in agreement there. So the what I'd like to get a sense for from the group, so I hadn't planned to do this at this point in the discussion, but part of our planning here is, you know, we're looking at, and we got a better sense from the call earlier today on who's gonna be working on what, this is going to include, I think, the migration to go at the same time. So we'll have to kind of redistribute some things here and update it. We need to find someone to own the Open OMCI enabled Broadcom ONU adapter containerization effort. I believe AT&T is going to uh, contribute to that as well. Uh, need to get a name for an owner and then figure out who else from the community would like to work on that effort as well. And then we have the tech profile work. So these are the first three where we really need owners. We don't have anything for these two. I don't think they're gonna stay in this. Uh, I'll try and shade these out later maybe. I so don't Julie, think we'll have you, a path forward here. Yeah, so Julie, yeah. We, can, we, can, we can change the containerization uh, lead to be uh, somebody from Bradis's, Amit, uh, and, and, uh, and, um, and 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 will 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 that radices come back with with their resource uh, allocation and whether they can do this in 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 the March 2.0 time frame? Um, because I don't think ONF uh, for the next at least for the next uh, one month will be involved in in this. Uh, 
um, and by that time, because because I, I'll be working on the on the tech profile. Tech profile. Okay. Yeah. So so uh, and by that time it will be too too late for for uh, me to do any meaningful contribution uh, uh, um, after that in in the go ahead. Okay. So let Amit uh, and Radisses lead this effort, and uh, we'll have them come back with uh, their um, their timeline and estimates. So Amit, are you all right if I put you as the team lead for this? Are you fine leading that effort? Or is there someone else? I, yeah, uh, I need to update uh, your uh, <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Jilly, yeah. sorry. Uh, oh, I had a bad connection to oh, I had to go down and then reconnect. So I missed some part of the conversation, but that's fine. So uh, just to clarify, when we say containerization of open OLT adapter, this is uh, only the Golang part of it, or are we talking about yes. Python uh, um, containerization also? No, I mean, so it's, it's, it's uh, depending on what, what you come back and say that, you know, what what is achievable in by you know the march uh, 2.0 time frame uh, i okay. guess depending on that uh, sean will uh, make a decision whether he wants to also promote a, a go um, sorry a python uh, adapter for example if you come okay. back and say that by march 2.0 you can you, you can do uh, authentication DH, dhcp and uh, you know the basic functionality i don't see a reason for us to uh, <coughs> uh, go ahead with with a python Okay, yeah, no, that's that's fine. Yeah, I can I can take the uh, lead out there. So, so I, I guess I guess the implication of that then is that uh, you know there's going to be no integration with the Golang Wolf Core <clears throat> Core unless it's a, a simulated adapter, right, I guess, right? So there's no hardware testing that can be done um, with the new Wolf Core, the Golang, <clears throat> excuse me, Wolf yeah. Core. Right. That's because, yeah, I think that's correct. I, I'm sorry, I didn't understand that. Why, why, yeah, what's why that? Won't, yeah. Uh, why wouldn't there be any integration with hardware? I mean, you have so, to, so, right? So, so my, my, maybe this is the wrong understanding, but, but the Volta Core <clears throat> interface is a, a message-based interface, right, between the Volta Core and, and the adapters. <laughs> so the adapters need to be able to support that message-based interface in a containerized environment, I, I, I'm assuming, right? I mean, is yeah, there any other? I mean, yes, that makes so, sense. Yeah, so, so, so then, unless you're using a 1.x build, you can't do integration of the new Golang vCore with um, real hardware that has a containerized adapter, right? You have, you have to go with 1.x. No, uh, Sean, I think. So, is that so the device so the device has a driver uh, which we call the open OLT driver that is that is going to be i mean that's going to be enhanced but the, oh man sorry about that so so we, we are going to maintain the grpc interface uh, between the adapter and and the and the device yeah um, yeah going forward from python to go to containerize that interface is going to be remain the same and, and is going to just be built upon uh, um so so the hard we going to we, we will be able to use the hardware uh, with the new go based adapter i i i don't see where's the disconnect no no the, with the v core right the the 2. Dot, well the old 2.0 golang v core <laughs> right that can't be integrated with the hardware unless you have a containerized adapter with a message interface. And we don't have that in Python right now, as far as I'm aware. Uh, that's why you have the open OLT adapter for you to talk to. I'm, I'm kind of uh, missing the gist of what you're trying to say, Sean. Yeah, I, I'm missing the gist of it too. If, we, if, they, if they build the Go containerized adapter, it will, it will it will operate with the message-based interface. No, no. I'm, what I'm saying is that it, it with, with the until we have the Go-based containerized adapter with the message interface, how how are we going to test um, the new vCore 2.0 with the hardware? Well, 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 we can't until that work is complete. I think right. That's what <laughs> so, so that's what I'm saying. <laughs> so, so until we until we have yeah, but you can do it in parts, right? I mean. The, the the go based adapter doesn't have to come day one with everything right if it can just you know uh, the go based adapter will will get discovery of onu indications 
from the hardware and then propagate that into the Go core so that uh, a, 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 a virtual port um, uh, shows up on the logical device for that ONU. That is step one. If that happens, right, I mean, there you go. You have the starting, we have the beginnings of uh, integration between the Go adapter and the Go core. Yep. Right? So, sort of, uh, Sean, so Amit has a has a Jira epic on this and he's he's got stories in it. And, oh, and yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm aware, yeah. I'm aware. But but so, from from yeah. from now until when something shows up that's integratable as an adapter with the new core, you you can't, I mean, you can't test that interface, right? Unless, unless you well, have. Well, you can. Okay, so uh, there are uh, other ways you can go about it, right? So first of all, the Go core has to talk to the OF agent and show up in the SDN controller, right? So uh, you can you can probably simulate, right? Let's say with the Ponsim adapter. Um, you can simulate that a logical device is being created and that logical device shows up in Onos, right? That's, that's, that's actually step zero, right? You can even, uh, and from what I heard last week was that that OF agent integration with uh, the Go core is, is still happening. Am I right, Ken, or? Yeah, that's, that's correct. Okay. No, it's still happening. There, there's some integration that has been done, but it's not fully integrated. So there's uh, right. so, still some work there. So step zero has to happen. And then at that, at that same time in parallel, step one is, uh, say, happening with the Go-based uh, open OLT adapter. Um, uh, so it happens in step. And like Shad said, right, the Epic is, is ready. So still not getting your full point, Sean. I guess we should move on because I guess these are implementation details. I mean, and and Amit and the team. I mean, you guys can work through it, and and I'm sure. This, I don't. No, see well, my, my my point was that you know is, is that maybe there's some advantage to having the the Python based containerization continue for a little while. Uh, but if if not, that's that's fine. We can we can just just everything go with the Go uh, based adapter. But there's, there's going to be some time interval between. Being able to run with the Go-based adapter and the uh, V core. Okay, I think we. And so we had that kind of captured as one of the pros when we were discussing on the previous call about uh, if, if we want to continue the containerization of the Python-based adapter. So I'll keep that. You know, Sean said in the notes I send out is probably not captured the best way here, but I'll see if I can do some cleanup. Amit, if you don't mind, I'm going to circle back to you for a minute while we're here. It sounds like there's still, a, I think we still need to have a lot of discussion with the group related to kind of the timing for how we work things out. I wanted to check, do you think next Thursday we could target a preliminary meeting? I know you're going to pull together uh, some a presentation with the proposed design. You were going to do some initial work, hopefully within the next week. Do you think we can schedule at least a slot in a discussion time next Thursday? So a week from Thursday on the call. So that would be the 31st uh, Julie, of January. Yeah, Julie, yeah. I'll, I'll get back as to by when we will have a design ready by next okay. week. Uh, I, I need to okay. check with the team as to where exactly Got they it. are right now. Yeah. Okay. Okay, let me go back to, I think, let's see, we've got 15 minutes left. There's a little bit I would like to do right now uh, related to identifying resources for some of the work for the high priority items, those three we've got for uh, the current schedule. So I'm going to hold off and see if we have time to go over the new JIRA issues after I do some preliminary work here. If we don't have time to cover these today, please everyone take a look at what's in JIRA online. If we left off last time with 1386, so 1387 on would be the new JIRA issues, and then we can cover them on Thursday's call if we don't have time today. So let me go back to the release planning. So, uh, uh, so Shad, I, I think I gathered from you uh, work you would do on the OpenLT uh, uh, containerization work would be at least not starting for about a month, so it may not be in this in this time frame. In any case, you'll be focused initially working on tech uh, tech profile work. 
I wanted to check uh, Dinesh and Arun, if we proceed with just the looking at migrating to Go and containerizing the Go-based OpenLT adapter, are you uh, able to shift your focus, Dinesh and Arun, to working on that version rather than the, um, the Python-based? Yes, I can. Okay, thank you. So I'll keep you on the list here for this. I think we have some others. Arun, Arun left, right? But I think based on HCL decision, then they, they may come back in in February time frame. Okay. And then, Julie, there's a CIG also potentially available, right? Yes. You're right. I have that on the notes. I did not capture that here. Uh, and then, Lynn, if you have the names for you, who you'd like to identify here, you can just send me an email. I can update the slide so we get our, our team put together here. Um, okay. The, okay. Thank but you. But CIG wants to convert their own adapter into Go, right? Not open OLT. They're using open OLT. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, and then potentially, uh, I think we, on the module side, we'll probably put the CIG and the Redis both as owners. So we have multiple reviewers. Yes, I think that makes sense. Multiple multiple folks who can do the plus twos and the merges would be good. Okay. And then on the ONU <laughs> adapter, the containerization Matt. effort for that. You can All put right. Matt. Thank you, Matt. And, and others do, from do it put me yeah. down as a contributor since uh, obviously I'll have the ad train ONU done before that. Yeah, or not just okay. I've got to copy him like I did last time. So as long as I can make it. going to take just work and take credit for it. <laughs> it worked for me last time. Uh, that's okay. It's open source. <laughs> and Matt, uh, Chip, do, do you know when when are you going to complete on your on the Adtran containerization? Uh, I, I don't have an exact schedule, but I did look at it, and and the first chunk of containerization is pretty simple. Um, I really have to get into the environment first, make sure there's no doozies. Okay. And but, is, uh, but I will concentrate some on the ONU because we need to change the OMCI database and maybe a few other things. Okay. And 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 the um, not not to ignore, you do have an OLT adapter. Is Atran also also going to do that? Uh, that that's correct because we need that to be able to. Uh, just do the O and U as well. Okay, I, I, I think I think we'll probably be in pretty good shape. I, you know, I have to look at resources, but I think we'll be in pretty good shape by March. Okay, I'm hoping. Okay. <laughs> well, you're speaking, so that's good. <laughs> so, question: Do we have anyone else from the community who is planning to contribute to the effort for the containerization of the O and U adapter? Okay. If we have anyone after the call, just go ahead and send me an email. I'll get you added to the list. And then I'm not sure if I have everyone captured on the technology profile work. It sounds like, let me get Shad on here. And it sounded like Saurav is going to be working on that as well. Is that right? Yes, that is correct. Yeah, can we have a maybe a separate meeting just to talk about who's working on what. Yeah, I, I've been, <clears throat> that's right. I've been waiting for confirmation from uh, Bora, Mesut, uh, and that, you know, this brigade work is actually going to go forward. And uh, I guess I kind of have it uh, from last night. So I'll be setting up uh, something so that we can meet um, separately from the Volta calls. Okay, sounds good. Okay. If you need me to set that, I think that's maybe just a coordination between you guys, but if you need me to set something up, let me know. Thank you, Julie. Okay. And then, Amit, I've got you on there. Garish, I have you on there. I've got Gamza and Corey. Is, um, and I'm I not sure. I don't think, sorry, I'm go ahead, sure. uh, Sean. Yeah. Yes. yeah I, I'm not sure Amit uh, is committed to that. Uh. Ah, okay. It's, it's really Sean that we need uh, for guidance. Yes, I have him as the team lead. Uh, yes, okay. Okay, so Amit, I'm guessing probably you're focusing then on the, 
the OLT work. So should I remove you from the contributor list for tech profiles? Yes, you can do that. Okay. All right. And then let's see. I had Sienna down on the slides for the uh, discussion last Thursday related to who was going to be involved in this. Are you going to, uh, is there anyone specific I should put down from Sienna? I'm not sure if this was more in the related to the testing and interaction with the core and any related work that shows up there or if there's something specific I need to track on this slide. Well, there's, there's one thing that we're going to need, uh, you know, is, is Corey was working on some uh, mm -hmm. Python based um, code within the core that needs conversion into the new core. Ah, okay. So um, we're going to need probably some help with that. So I don't understand. In tech profile work, why do you need someone from Sienna in the core? Well, the, I, would was, thought, uh, I would have thought that the Sienna resources would make more sense in the in helping out the folks who are working on the containerization. No, I think uh, it's just kind of consulting with them because we have, with the flow manager needs changing. Um, you have to do, handle the meters and the. Uh, I guess we have to think about the the metadata. How I guess that just gets passed through. Um, Maybe there's not uh, too much of a change there, but, but there's the meters, uh, meter support. No, I, right? I don't think we need uh, Sienna's help here. Uh, okay, we... all right. Yeah. That's fine. That's fine. Okay, what I'll do is uh, I'll just track. Go ahead. Julia, this is Mr. from Nestia. One remark. Actually, Korai moved from Nestia and Kamze will replace the uh, Korai role uh, in okay. uh, this uh, job. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, thanks. All right. So I think for the moment, I'll I'll put Sienna down here. Consulting is needed, so not necessarily. Uh, I don't think we need the we need the consulting. Oh, okay. as well. So I think we need. Yeah. So should I just remove the Sienna? Yeah, if Sienna can actually beyond consulting, if you can actually do uh, in the containerization work, if you if Sienna can contribute as well. I think that will help greatly. Um, yeah, and that first slide, first line item. Yeah, it definitely makes more sense. And and Ken is doing that. Okay, so Ken, uh, should I? I'll let you respond there. <laughs> well, I'll wait until I see the design. Uh, I'll help, like in in design review stuff like that. And in terms of coding, uh, we'll see. But uh, because we have other things to complete on the on, on the, yeah. the entire yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, that's right. So it's like uh, you know, okay, fine. We'll containerize the open OLT adapter uh, with the new Go core, and but if it doesn't talk northbound to ONOS because say the integration with the OF agent is not complete, then think can't proceed. So I I think just naturally you are going to have work. Over there, bringing yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, like, yeah, right, in terms right. of integration and stuff like that, for sure, right, we'll have to right. Do that. right. Okay, Ken, I'm just going to note you down here that you know we're expecting you probably will be involved in the code review. We can tweak these as needed. This is just mainly so we get the right team of folks together. Everyone knows who's working on what. Well, I've got you, Ken. Uh, the scalability testing with the simulated OLT. I believe Sienna had said they would be working on that. Uh, once the core work was complete. So is that correct? Yeah, that's correct, yes. Okay, and who should I put down as a lead for that? Would that be you? Yeah, you can put myself there. Can, can I understand what, what the simulated OLT is? Uh, simulated OLT is just uh, a, an adapter that we created in, in Go. Uh, basically what it does, it's uh, before we had this simulated OLT in the Python world, uh, basically, it's uh, it just react to like we create device. We we try to figure out how many devices we can create it, and uh, we can try to delete some devices. It's it's really to to mimic a scenario, and and the whole point of that is really uh, to test the core, how much devices we can hold, how much transaction we can do. It's it's more it's more aimed for that. If we want to have, for example, uh, scalability testing with with actual devices or simulated actual devices via the 
uh, open world tea, then BBC will be the one that uh, to be used. I see. So these are like mock mock devices that are showing exactly. up uh, for in the core. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. I see. Okay. Okay. And can uh, would would the um, Rich and Stefan, Sergio, are there others I should add onto the list of contributors here? Yes. Okay, I'll add them afterwards, the usual group then. And uh, thank you for that. Chad, I had a question for you. In the past, you had been involved in some of the work on the BBC. Are you expecting to do any contribution there? Or I think you're likely going to be focused primarily on the, the tech profile work and then on containerization as time presents? So um, the BBSIM, I, I kind of just own the OMCI okay. uh, part of it, and I'll be uh, enhancing it as as um, as, as uh, in, in a kind of a part time. Um, okay. So you could you could leave me over there. Um, yeah, I'll I'll be involved in it uh, going forward, but only only on the OMCI. Side. Okay. Uh, because that is uh, the OMCI is is not complete yet. It's just enough to uh, make Volta happy. Um, okay. So there's some more stuff to be done. There's there's some uh, interest from uh, folks at Netsia to to look at BBSIM, um, Mahir, Sirkant, maybe. Um, I'll uh, I'll let Mesut answer. Hi, this is Mahir from Netsia. Yes, we are also working on this PVC issue, so we, we can contribute. Uh, at least you can write my name to, on there. Uh, this will not perhaps be a hundred percent, but I, I can contribute on PVC issues too. Okay, thank you. And then I had a question. Anyone else on BBC? Okay, then next, North Forge, I think we've still got some of you on the call today. So you had some proposed uh, next steps and things like that for enhancement of the automation suite and perhaps a test bed. Would you like to kind of officially uh, have that on on, uh, on the list here for, for a, a team lead for the 2.0 work and then so drive, drive the plan? Hi, Julie. So, uh, yeah, we're still working towards uh, our plan, and actually, there was a discussion uh, uh, from uh, ONFQA. We were made some suggestions by uh, Suchitra. So, we, we haven't, we have, we are looking at, at, into that right now, but we haven't finalized the next step. We're still tracking against our okay. current plan. Uh, for 2.0, that's going to to March, right? Yes. Yeah. So, right now, we're still. Uh, we're still planning to complete those those tests by the the, the sprint that ends March, uh, I think is okay. yeah uh, it's March twentieth I think or twenty second. Okay. Uh, I need to get back to you with uh, with with the next steps. <laughs> That's fine. Okay. So I'll put down that you're investigating on that, and then if we want to get a list of of contributors assigned on here, and probably you're right, we probably need someone on the ONF side as well. If you've been engaging with them. Okay. Yeah, so an FQA will be involved over there. Great, thanks. And I think there's only one other thing I wanted to discuss with this group here. So with the updates we have, with the list of contributors on this slide, we can update these numbers a little bit. So part of the planning here is if I could have the, the technical leads give me an assessment after they've taken a look at things and we think we've identified all the resources. How many development sprints do you think you need for what we have in 2.0? So we can see if if we have um, something achievable or not. So we really have two sprints that we'd wanted to dedicate towards development and then hope to do one for integration. I expect all three sprints will be needed for some of the development work. Let me go to the schedule here to remind folks so we've got Sprint 13, 14, and 15, and that brings us to late March right now. And then we were hoping during Sprint 5 that that's when a bunch of the integration testing could occur. So I'm out of time for today. Let me go back to the agenda really quickly. So I think we needed to have this discussion. We have a loose path forward, I think, for the 
OpenOLT containerization effort. Some replanning needs to be done there, and then a plan for phasing in what's achievable in priority order by March. And then uh, we'll schedule a call later on with the proposed design for the Go Base adapter, and then we'll do that review with the community. We have a couple other items coming up for future that are not scheduled in yet. Bjorn, one, are, if Bjorn, are you still on the bridge? Yes, I'm here. There. One of them is if you have a time slot that works for you up the road for uh, an overview of the FTTB related changes that that Deutsche Telekom, uh, what your what your expectations and requirements are there. I think we talked about scheduling that in the future. Just let me know what time slot works. We'll see what we can do. And then some future discussion also planned on PPPOE and then also on EPON support in the tech profile. I think in this sprint we'll have our hands full with a number of technical discussions coming up just with the planning to meet the aggressive time frame for one. Any other last comments from the group before we drop the bridge? I know we're a minute over. Julie. Uh, Ju yeah, okay, yeah. Mike, go ahead. This is Mahir from Netsia, and I think we didn't talk about T-Cont, multi t issue. No, you're right. So that's back to the release planning slides here. Uh, this one, how we left it last week was the thought was that we needed to complete the technology profile work first, and then reassess whether or not we had time to complete it in the sprint. And you're right, I need to get this on the schedule for a deep dive as well. Okay. So do you, does, does on this, the Nestia side? Yes. That, does this mean that we we won't talk with multi T condition now and we postpone it and we will talk it uh, in uh, as, as sometime uh, during the sprints of uh, to the talk? I think that depends on the resources because right now I believe most of the resources from all three here are mm -hmm. going to be focused on the technology profile work and on the OpenLT adapter containerization. If you have resources who are available to do this, then by all means, we can bring that contribution in. Right now, I think we're, our main limit is, is on resources. Uh, and, and one question. So, so um, um, is Netsia is thinking about this multiple TCOM as part of your development on the technology profile for the one dot X uh, one dot X release, right? Uh, Sean, I think one dot X is not uh, feasible for the multi TCOM okay. support, but one two dot O. I mean, we can uh, give some resources for the multi TCOM support. Okay. Um, do, uh, do, do, Kevin, do, yeah. do you think, um, um, I'm wondering whether, do you think we need to have a short meeting regarding to how exactly um, this needs to be done, or it's, maybe this can be discussed in some, in, in, uh, uh, offline on the Volta Discuss? Uh, maybe we can arrange a, a small group meeting. Uh, we can uh, maybe, we, because we worked a little bit on this uh, architecture uh, mm -hmm. design, and maybe mm -hmm. we can present uh, uh, what we thought for the multi t then then yeah, we can uh, bring it up in the, to the community. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So if you would Thanks, like so. to schedule into one of the Thursday calls, uh, to have a discussion, let me know. It sounds like there needs to be a, a smaller meeting as well first. Um, but if you have resources, then that would give us a way to pull this in. We just didn't have any any resources identified yet. Okay, Julie. Okay, I thank know. you. Thank yeah, you. thank you for that reminder because I needed to get that onto the the discussion list as well. I've got that tracked here. Okay. Uh, anyone else with last comments before we drop the bridge? Okay, thank you everyone for the discussion and I'll talk to you soon. I'll close up the